Hey guys, welcome back to a Trip of a Lifetime podcast with me, Celeste. And me, Jasmine! <laughs> Today we'll be, uh, we're going to be reviewing The End of the World, episode 2 of season 1 of New Who. Uh, it came out on the 2nd of April 2005. It was written by Ross T. Davies and directed by Euros Lin, who's actually directed a lot of Doctor Who episodes and some of Tortured as well. I found it really interesting how, from the previously title, you know, the previously the last episode it ran straight into the episode like it you know it didn't just cut and then we're into the action it went straight in which you know it does happen a few it normally happens over two parters not individual episodes i really liked it yeah but i know there isn't much to say i don't have as much to say about this one compared to the other one like in terms of items but i did like some themes they had in here yeah same um I found it really interesting how they developed the character of Rose in this episode. I mean, I feel like she just has a crisis after a crisis after a crisis. Like, honestly, she's like, she's obviously, she's like, oh my god, those are aliens. You know, they look like aliens. Because it's not like the Doctor who looks human. Like, the others, they, you know, they look completely different. You know, blue and some of them really short and some are tree people. And, you know, it's easy to see that she gets overwhelmed. And then you can kind of see her looking over at the earth. And then also she has that crisis later on where she's like, oh my god, I don't know who the doctor is. I've just run off with this random guy. <laughs> and then I feel like she has a third crisis later on when Cassandra's like, oh, I'm the last human. She goes off on Cassandra. Um, yeah, that's, so I found that really interesting because I don't think that's really happened with a companion, really. Maybe Bill, possibly. But other than that, most of them, they're kind of like, yeah, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, It felt like she was being more realistic and speaking from the audiences or real life people as if the Doctor would just pop up, you know, and we didn't, let's say, know who he was. You know, she's had some really relatable things and it just seemed realistic compared to other companions who just go with it. I'm not saying all of them do. I'm just saying s- most of them, it doesn't have real life consequences or thoughts at times. Yeah, I guess they kind of just trust the doctor almost immediately there's no like kind of i don't know i mean i guess it's different with amy because you know uh, without getting into too much spoilers she meets him when she's really young so she kind of trusts him because of that whereas almost everyone else i don't know i i guess maybe because russell just didn't want to go through those same story beats with martha because it would feel a bit stale you know um but you don't really get that and also you know donna had already encountered some monsters before she starts traveling so i guess i uh, yeah, so i guess it's maybe it's a bit different because you know rome's encountering a big blob thing and a whole lot of mannequins is going to be very different to martha encountering the jadoon or Mar- uh, donna encountering the rachnos you know which look really weird you know like um they're not like things you'd find on earth if that makes sense i also really liked the way that the doctor was clearly showing off in that first scene I mean, like, he was literally just, like, um, spinning all the dials. He's like, oh, no, that's boring. Let's go fast. Like, let's go further. You know, he's clearly trying to show off for it because it's been a while since he's been around someone, you know, that's going to permanently be there because he's been, spoiler alert, in a war for years. Um, I've often thought that it's always been kind of the Doctor that kind of falls for Rose before Rose falls for the Doctor. But actually, those two have been flirting almost from day one, which I quite like. I, I, I'm i honestly, I think I prefer nine rows to ten rows in the dynamic because there's a lot more push and pull there. Whereas, you know, I suppose ten rows are a lot more lovey dovey, which I, and, you know, Rose is a lot more, even more selfish, I think. I mean, maybe that's because obviously ten has a slight personality change and he looks younger. So I don't know. I agree. Yeah. I don't have much more to add to that. I, I completely agree with you there. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, then there were some things like the... Um, well, first of all, you, the Doctor was actually flying the TARDIS. Because normally, you know, when we get that, um, the scenes in the uh, console room, he just flicks a couple of buttons, pulls a lever, and then you're there. Whereas it actually felt like Nine was actually flying the TARDIS. He was a lot more... I don't know, hands on, if that makes sense. And then there was the actual, the first use of the psychic vapor. Oh, I loved that. That was great. 
Yeah, which is obviously, you know, a re- it's a staple of the show, you know, it gets do- the Doctor out of all kinds of scrapes and sometimes into quite a few of them. Uh, they had some nice, well, not nice, they had some themes in there that were quite, some of them were dark, some of them personal, and then there was also, they were also interspliced, is that the word? Interspliced? Intercut, Intercut maybe? maybe? Um, with more serious moments? Uh, no, sorry, what? More serious, more, more funny moments. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, they go like really intense to funny in a second. Like, for example, the gift giving ceremony. Yeah, that, that was. I, the, I give you breath from my lungs or whatever it is. Yeah, um, it's great. Or the, the appearance of the repeated meme, which is funnier now than it was back <laughs> then, because you know memes. Are, I, I don't know. It seems to mean idea back then, whereas now, obviously, it means you know the funny jokes we see on the internet all the time. But um. Yeah, I, I, what kind of things? Because you you mentioned that. Can you like pinpoint any particularly? This is again me overanalyzing a bunch of stuff. But you have Cassandra, who's a bit speciest slash raci- racist. Oh, she is definitely <laughs> racist. Yeah, um, she's also very classist as well. She's clearly very rich. Um, she's also trans. Which is something I never picked up on. Well, I think I might have picked up on before. And I actually, Russell got a lot of backlash for this. Because, you know, cause she's very, obviously, um, uh, focused on her looks and uh, is all plastic surgery and all that stuff. That because of that, people kind of took issue with that uh, portrayal of a trans person. Especially since the actor who plays who voices Cassandra slash plays her in the next time you see a spoiler alert, um, is, is a woman, I can't remember her name, it's going to bug me. Um, it'll come back to me later. It's the, it's, she plays in Madame Hooch in the Harry Potter films. Iconic. That we do not support J.K. Rowling, just to put that in there. Building up on Cassandra again, she also uh, is a commentary and... And it has implica- and she has implications of greed and also beauty and thinness as well as the modern those those days modern day standards of beauty, which is that you have to be thin and you have to look a certain way. Obviously, obviously this is different because it's a long distance in the future. Yeah, and obviously it's a lot more exaggerated for comedic effect, and you know, but um, to kind of I don't know prove the point. Um, because Russell's always been very political through his narratives, and obviously it's, I, I guess it's kind of just showing how stupid um, thin, cult, you know, the whole thin inspiration stuff is, and how, you know, fat phobia, I mean, it's still going on today, it's still just as bad as it was, but, you know, um, yeah, just kind of showing that, I don't know, like, thinness isn't everything, you know, I mean, she literally, that's all she cares about, and then she's kind of a bit shallow because of that, you know what I mean? Um, then there's, of course, there's the, the brilliant iPod joke when they bring out the, um, oh god, the jukebox, and also, um, and it's just, and then they start, oh, let's play this traditional, you know, song, like this classical piece, and then Tainted Love starts playing, and then later on you've got, oh, let's mourn the earth, the classical ballad, and the toxic but Britney Spears, like, I just, I know a lot of people say that that joke hasn't aged well, but I still think it's funny. Like, maybe in 20 years it won't be, but now it's pretty funny. Like, I still think that holds up. I also really liked, you know, um, that plumber. You know, uh, she's not only is she an alien, you know, bright blue, but she's also a woman, which I think is really interesting because I think, you know, even now people like also always assume that those kind of handyman jobs are for men, you know, and I just find it interesting that they cast a woman in that. Um, are you thinking anything else you noticed? Uh, I was going to comment on some of the other deep moments. Mm. So, for example, Jane talking to the doctor and him telling her about the time war. What, Jabe? Jabe, yeah. Sorry, ja- it's, sorry. it's Jabe. <laughs> yeah, not Jane. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's just the fact that those two are flirting the entire time. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's, it's quite sweet, but... You also get a taste of the Doctor's empathetic side, but as well as his heartless side. So, for example, the empathetic side is with... Jabe? Jabe. Where she... Spoiler alert, where she turns into flames. Her hands turn into flames. I feel like if we're talking about the current episode, we don't have to say spoilers. But it's just any future episode. Uh, But 
you also see his heartless side with Cassandra. Yeah, I mean, he is very ruthless. I feel like this is probably the first time, because, you know, he ga gave a good chance to the nested consciousness. But I suppose, th I guess the difference is, you know, the nested consciousness has nothing. You know, they lost their planet in the time war, um, which is obviously gets expanded on a little bit in this episode. Um, whereas Cassandra, on the other hand, has comparatively has everything you know she's probably living in a really rich house or whatever um i mean we don't get to see that side of her really but um you know she's very well off and she's you know she tries to kill people for money like and so obviously the doctor is gonna have a lot less empathy there and it's like well she doesn't really deserve a second chance plus she's you know thousands and thousands of years we don't know how old she is but we can assume she's at least a couple of thousand years old. Um, so I guess that point of living too long, but equally you could easily make that point about the doctor himself. So he's a bit, he's a little bit hypocritical there, but at least he's not trying to kill people to extend his life. But arguably the, the doctor did give Cassandra a chance because he did tell her to reverse it and then she teleported out. That is true. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it's interesting how Rose still call, even though she hates Cassandra, still was like, Doctor, don't do that. And um, she does get a bit thrown off by that. Interestingly, not as thrown off as I'd think, as, uh, as I'd have thought she would, but maybe it's because she's 19. She's a bit naive at this point, you know. Uh, and she's also kind of stuck with him, so, well, you know, no point arguing with him. She literally says in the episode, Don't argue with a designated driver. Uh, it doesn't stop her in um, future episodes, but, you know. What else? Oh yeah, the, on when she's on the phone to Jackie, I noticed something that I didn't pick on up on before, and um, and this is kind of a spoiler. We're not going to say why it's foreshadowing necessarily, but she mentions to Jackie that she's going to be late home, or she may be a bit late home, which is very interesting. When we get to two episodes time, we're not going to, you know, try and spoil that for anyone watching for the first time or someone who's re-watching and can't actually remember what happens but it's interesting i've never picked up on that a little bit of foreshadowing before but that's very clever also i thought the cgi of cassandra exploding was a bit dodge what do you think i i completely agree with you in that like i kind of part of me expected there to be a, a bit more gore like to make it a little bit more realistic I mean, there was some. I mean, it was pinging like backwards, but you know, it's a PG show, and they had a limited budget, so. Yeah, uh, but I did think, like you said, it, they could have done it a bit better. Obviously, it is to do with the budget and the time, and it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, they were obviously working with what they had. Um, we also had the first mention of Gallifrey, and also, well, I don't know if they necessarily mentioned Gallifrey by name. I can't actually remember, but they, the Doctor at least mentions that Gallifrey's gone. Which is obviously good, would have been news to a lot of people when they were first watching it because um, this is something I didn't realise when I first watched it. But the Time War was something that Russell made up himself, um, and that Gallifrey was alive and well up in uh, even in, during the nineties movie is completely Russell's idea. Anything else? What would you rate the episode? I rated it. A six out of ten. Like mainly, it would have been a bit lower if it hadn't have been for Rose's character development in that and how you know like a constant being in a crisis kind of thing. Um, what about you? I don't know if this is too high, but I I would rate it a seven out of ten. Now I don't know if it's just because I think it's too high because there might be other episodes that I think are better than that. Um, but I thought that was a lot more um packed and it flowed a little bit more nicer because we've got introduced to the characters than the previous episode yeah cool i guess that's it uh, for this episode um i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you next time